What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, I want to provide you with 10 examples for powerful life templates in PyCharm that can make your coding more efficient and your coding experience more pleasant. So let us get right into it. All right, so PyCharm offers this feature that allows us to create custom code templates to speed up our coding. It also comes with some templates out of the box that we can use. For example, I can type something like main, I can press enter and it completes into if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals main and stuff like that, uh, which is the basic main section. I can also do list comprehensions by saying comp L. This is also a template here. I can just provide using these variables my list. Uh, so I can say comp L. I can say my lists, I can press enter jumps to the next variable, I can say x, press enter jumps to the next variable, I can say x squared, for example, uh, and then this is a list comprehension. And we can define these templates um, also in our own way. So we don't have to use the pre existing ones only we can define our own custom templates. And in this video today, I want to provide 10 concrete examples for useful templates, you can then either use those or feel inspired to come up with your own ideas. Uh, and I want to get started here right away with something that I use quite often. This is a very simple one. First of all, how do we do that? We open up here uh, using the file dialog here. So we click on file, uh, not dialog file menu, we click on file, we click on settings. And um, we go to editor live templates, and then we can choose the language, for example, Python. Uh, and then I can just click here, I can press uh, click on this plus button, I can create a new life template, I can give it a name. So for example, let's say H or H E L W for Hello World, something like that. And then I can just say print Hello World is the template text, then I can say, um, the find a context, it's going to be the Python context, I can press OK. And then if I say hell W, enter, it prints Hello World, or it it writes print Hello World. That's the basic idea. Now, what are some concrete examples that are useful? The first one that I want to show you is uh, the DS imports, I call it, you can call those whatever you want, you can call them DSI, you can call them imports, data signs, whatever you want to call them, I call them DS imports. And when I press DS imports, when I type DS imports and press enter, I get the basic uh, data science deck, NumPy, pandas, matplotlib and seaborn, and I can still delete seaborn if I don't need it. Uh, but that's quite convenient to not always have to import everything manually to just say DS imports, there you go, bam, I have all the imports I need. This is the first one that I think is quite useful. So how do you define it? Quite simple. Again, we go to settings, we go to live templates. And what I did here is essentially I call the DS imports, and the template text is just the the code. So since we don't have any variables here, we don't have any, uh, any values that change, we just have the static code, we can do it like that. Don't forget to change the context to Python. That's it. And then we can use it. Uh, the second one I want to show you here that's quite useful is the join path. Now this is a one liner, this is quite simple. But what I oftentimes have to do is I have to join a path. So I have a certain uh, root path, and then I want to join into a second path, I want to go into a certain directory uh, of that root path. So what I did here is I called a template join path. And when I press enter, I get two variables here. The first one, for example, could be something like slash, then I press enter. And the second one could be my data or something like that. That is a template, of course, for this one, you need to already have OS imported, or you need to import OS afterwards. Now, when you want to work with variables, what you do is you go into settings, again, you go into life uh, templates again. And uh, which one was this, this was joint path, what you do is essentially you say um, your code, and then whenever you want to have a variable, you say dollar variable name dollar um, for the individual variables. And if I call two variables the same name, so if I say root path, and maybe down here, I say print again, root, this is going to be the same variable. So oh, I think now I just left uh, the menu. So let's do it again. If I say down here, print dollar root dollar, like this, if I now say, join path. Um, if I say, hello, world, you can see that it also fills the value down below. So this is how you work with variables here. Um, and this is also a template that I think is quite useful, even though it's short. 
The next one is not short at all. And if you are doing something with computer vision, if you're working with uh, OpenCV, this is going to be quite useful to you because whenever we do something in OpenCV, when we uh, when you want to work with a camera, when you want to work with a video source, uh, what you have to do is you have to do the same thing. You have to import CV2, which you're going to have to do here as well. And then you need to define a video capture. You need to say cap equals CV2 dot video capture. Then you need to provide a an, an index. So which camera are you using? Are you using a file? Then you need to set the width and the height. And then you have to have this uh, endless loop where you say return and frame equals caption dot read. And then you say, okay, if the return value is there, show the image, otherwise break. If the key pressed is this, wait for the key, destroy all windows, release, stuff like that. There's a lot of boilerplate code that we don't really need to think about. It's just code that needs to be typed. And for this, I uh, have this CV cap uh, template. When I press enter here, uh, I have the variable, which is the camera. So I can say zero here. I can press enter, jumps to the next one, the width, which is going to be, let's say, um, 800. Then the height, let's say 600. Then the weight key, so let's say, um, or actually the weight key is the frame, so let's say 30. Uh, and then here we have the key that terminates the script, so let's say Q. And that's basically it, that's the template. We of course need to also import CV2. Uh, but you can see that is some very basic code. It's always the same. You always have a video capture, you always have a width and a height, and you always read frames, you always show the image, or you do something with it, you can still delete this here if you want to, you wait uh, a certain number of frames, or you have a certain frame rate, let's put it that way, you have a certain key that terminates the whole thing. And that's always the same. So instead of writing this every time from scratch or copy pasting it, just CV cap and fill out the values. What does this look like? This is a little bit more complicated. Uh, but the principles are the same. So we have essentially here, um, all the code, and then we have cam number with height, frames, and key. Those are the variables. And uh, yeah, that's how they are filled. Um, what else do we have? We have um, flattening a list. This is something that I always have to look up because or not necessarily look up, but I never get it intuitively. I never get it right intuitively. So what you have is you have some list my list and you have in that list lists of values. So we have one, two, three, then you have another list here with four, five, six, and then you have another list with seven, eight, for example. And then you have another list with nine, for example, what you want to do is you want to turn this list into a flattened version. So you want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in one list. That's the goal. This is not too complicated in terms of programming, but there's a list comprehension. And the problem with this list comprehension is that you always have to, um, to do it it, at least for me in the unintuitive order. So what you do in order to flatten this list is to say a flattened list is equal to and then you say x four, and you don't say x for x, you say x for y in my list, and then you say for x in y. So you don't say x for x and y for y in my list, you say x for y in my list for x and y. Um, not too complicated, you can also just memorize it by but for this, I have a template, I call it flatten list. And all I have to do is I have to provide the collection, my list, it just saves brain power for more important tasks. So essentially, I have this list, I want to flatten it, I don't want to think about this. So I just say flatten, flatten list, I type my list and the list is flattened. I don't care about anything else. I don't have to think about this. I don't have to double check. I use a template, I provide the collection, it's flattened. Um, yeah, so that's something I have. Again, I'm not going to show all of these templates now because uh, quite simple, you just have a simple variable in there. Uh, the process is the same. What else do we have merging data frames? This is also not too complicated, but it happens. Oftentimes I have data frame one being something I have data frame two being something. So I have PD dot data frame. Once we import pandas as PD, maybe I have data frame two. And now I want to merge those. How do I do that with my template merge DF? I just provide uh, DF one, I provide df2, I provide inner, I provide the column name, for example, name. And that's it. So maybe this is a little bit overkill, because I have four variables, uh, why even use a template. But this is just something I like to have, because I don't want to always look up what's the difference be <clears throat> between join between uh, merge between concatenation, uh, what are the parameter names and stuff like that. I just have to type in df1, df2, uh, the way I want to join, or the way I want to merge, and then the column I want to merge on. 
quite simple. So I have one for this as well. Um, then I also have um, two templates for server socket and for client socket. So if I type server socket, I get the basic structure of a server socket. Of course, for this, by the way, let me just remove this again, we need to have socket already imported. Then I say server socket and it says, okay, socket, socket, AFI net socket, sock stream socket, so TCP IP. Uh, and then I can just provide here the uh, host, the port and how many connections I want to uh, have waiting until I reject the connection. So here I can say 127001 for local host here I can say 9999. Uh, now I terminated the template by pressing escape. So let me just rerun this server socket 127001 enter 9999 enter and then here maybe five connections. There you go. That's a template. I also have the same template for client sockets. The difference is that we connect and we don't bind. So I can say here client socket. And then I can say here again, same thing. Now I there you go. Um, that's just nice to have because you don't have to always write the same code. Whenever you do something, you know, my videos, I have a lot of videos on chats, I have a lot of videos on networking scripts, every time we do the same thing, every time we have a socket, we have a client, it's always the same. For those of you who watch all my videos, or you watch most of my videos, you know that we all the time do the same thing. We say server equals socket, 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 client equals socket, connect, bind, listen, whatever. It's always the same thing. And this can just be outsourced into a template to save time. Um, then I also have something that's quite useful, not because it's complicated, but just because it saves time. When you want to time something, um, and you don't want to do it with time it, you want to do it with a start and end, and then you want to subtract start from end. Uh, I have a template for this time code, and basically just sets up the necessary structure. Of course, time, of course, time needs to be imported here. You can, of course, also include the import in the template. But then uh, if I do it again, I import it every time. So I don't want to do that. Um, but essentially, we have your start and in between, I can put some code. Maybe I should change this one, maybe I should change it to add. A, oh, no, I'm using escape again. Maybe I should add here a comment, put code. So then it looks I need to import time, then it looks like this time code. There you go, put code and then I can do some stuff like print hello world, this is going to take zero seconds, uh, or 1.46 e minus five, almost zero seconds. Uh, that's one thing I have. And then I have two more. That's the two, uh, the two last ones, they're flask related. So they're not Python templates per se, they're flask templates. Um, I don't have too many flask videos on this channel, I'm going to change that hopefully soon. But essentially, whenever you start a simple flask app, especially for tutorial, I'm not going to build some huge application, I just want to have a basic endpoint. Uh, what I have is uh, what I have here is I have the flask app. So the flask app, basically meaning this is the basic structure of a flask app I have the app, the index, the hello world, and I have running this server. That's it. That's a simple flask application. And then I have another one which is for adding an endpoint. Um, and this is just flask end. This just adds an endpoint I have here the route I can say slash projects, for example, enter and then the function name is going to be projects or something like that. And then the template that I want to render here could be templates slash projects dot HTML, whatever. Uh, and of course, we need to import render template. That's it. So those are my 10 uh, life templates that I use in PyCharm. Probably I'm going to add some more. I'm also not using all of those on a regular basis. Uh, I try to because they save time if you make it a habit. Let me know again, as I said in the comment section down below what your best ideas for life templates are. I think this can save a lot of time. Uh, my favorite one is probably probably the open CV one, or maybe the most used one is the DS imports. This is just nice. If you start a new script, DS imports, there you go, bam, I don't have to import. This is probably one that I use more often. I don't use open CV too much. But when I use it, CV cap is just nice to have. This is just awesome. So again, let me know in the comment section down below. This is how you create live templates in PyCharm. Those are my 10 templates.
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.